Thank you, Madam President. We thank the Swiss Federation for convening this open debate on the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. And we thank the Special Coordinator for the Middle East process for the briefing this morning. South Africa aligns itself with the statement delivered by the Republic of Uganda on behalf of the non-aligned movement. And we also align ourselves with the statement on behalf of the core group of the shared commitments in support of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East, UNRWA. Madam President, yesterday, South Africa filed its memorial to the International Court of Justice in its application of the Convention of the, on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide in the Gaza Strip, the South African versus Israel case. The memorial contains evidence which shows how the government of Israel has violated the Genocide Convention and continues to ignore and defy several orders on provisional measures of the ICJ. The evidence will show that under getting Israel Genocidal Act is the special intent to commit genocide, a failure by Israel to prevent incitement to genocide and genocide itself, as well as its failure to punish those inciting and committing acts of genocide. The evidence is detailed in over 750 pages of text, supported by exhibits and annexes of over 4,000 pages. While the memorial is comprehensive, nothing can fully capture the actual devastation of Palestinians living in Gaza as a result of actions of the, of the State of Israel. South Africa's memorial is once again a reminder to the global community to remember the people of Palestine, to stand in solidarity with them, and to stop the catastrophe which has been possible only because Israel has failed to comply with its international obligations despite the orders of the ICJ and actions and interventions of numerous UN bodies. President, last week we commemorated the signing of the Charter of the United Nations 79 years ago. The UN was created to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. To live up to this aspiration, all nations must insist on compliance with the UN Charter and international law. The action taken by South Africa and joined by other states is primarily to stop a genocide in Palestine peacefully by holding Israel accountable in the institutions set up by the UN for this very purpose. Israel has effectively been granted unprecedented impunity to breach international law and norms, which has imperiled the institutions of global governments that were established to hold all states accountable. The recent developments in Palestine and the wider Middle East region are alarming. Despite our collective warning and appeal for cessation of hostilities in Gaza and the region, the situation is deteriorating by the day. This is despite the UN Security Council on 10 June 2024 adopting Resolution 2735, which welcomed the ceasefire proposal that emerged following diplomatic efforts by Egypt, Qatar, and the United States. The resolution proposed a comprehensive three-phase ceasefire deal to end the war in Gaza, and it urged both Israel and Hamas to implement it fully and without delay and conditions. Unfortunately, since then, the Israeli occupying state has continued to violate this resolution and persisted in violations of international law, including by intensifying its genocide and also perpetrating extrajudicial 
killings. Four months after the adoption of Resolution 2735, we are witnessing the blatant disregard for international human rights law and international humanitarian law. We are appalled by the continuing violence against Palestinians, as well as the shocking targeted attacks on schools and medical facilities sheltering Palestinians. Let us recall that in 2016, this council adopted Resolution 2286, which was co-sponsored by more than 80 member states. This resolution condemned attacks and threats against the wounded and sick, medical personnel and humanitarian personnel exclusively engaged in medical duties, their means of transport and equipment, as well as hospitals and other medical facilities. And it appears that for some, this resolution does not apply to the people of Palestine and Lebanon. This resolution also demanded that all parties to armed conflict comply fully with their obligations under international law, including international human rights law as applicable and international humanitarian law, in particular, their obligations under the Geneva Convention. And it is clear that for some, that provision applies to all except the state of Israel. We want to repeat it again. The resolutions adopted by this council and international law as a whole cannot be selectively applied. Giving rights to some and protecting a select few is something we as South Africans are well aware of. Madam President, the measures being taken by Israel against UNRWA, including the adoption of legislation by the Israeli parliament to prevent UNRWA from continuing its life-saving operations and essential work in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, must be deplored. Israel's banning of UNRWA is an additional violation of international law and contravenes the provisional measures mandated by the ICJ, which require immediate and effective steps to ensure the provision of essential services and humanitarian aid to alleviate the severe living conditions of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. As the occupying power, Israel is further obligated under the Fourth Geneva Convention specifically Article 59, to facilitate humanitarian assistance to the population across the entire occupied Palestinian territory. South Africa reaffirms its full support to UNRWA's indispensable role in providing life-saving humanitarian assistance and human development services. The agency is the backbone of humanitarian operations in Gaza and it has championed human development for Palestinian refugees in the occupied Palestinian territory, Jordan, Lebanon, and the Syrian Arab Republic. It is therefore important for the countries to reaffirm their political and financial support for the vital work of the agency. To curtail its operation is to condemn the Palestinians to even more death and suffering. Operationally, the entire humanitarian response in Gaza, which rests on Indra's infrastructure, will disintegrate. And again, we want to be clear, UNRWA is a UN agency. It is our agency. It represents the UN. If the international community accepts that the ban of a UN agency, this will set a terrible precedent leading to similar fate for other similar agencies elsewhere in the world. This will spell disaster for the multilateral system of goodwill and all the millions whose safety and well-being are dependent on such agencies. We reiterate our call to the international community to maintain their solidarity with UNRWA and provide the necessary financial and political support to the agency. Such solidarity 
is reflected in the statement of shared commitments on UNRWA, an initiative spearheaded by Kuwait, Jordan, and Slovenia, and signed by 123 member states, including South Africa. President, the situation in Gaza has now extended to Lebanon and beyond. The brewing tensions between Israel and Iran is of great concern. All sides must exercise restraint and work towards peace because the region is now on the verge of an all-out catastrophic regional conflict. South Africa is continually con stressed that irrespective of whether states believe that their use of force is lawful, it is never wise to resort to war as inevitably it is ordinary people who suffer the most as a consequence of war. I thank you. I thank the representative of South Africa for